by a painting that one of my students posted in the Facebook group and she'd done a painting of these little cape gooseberries and I thought well, how lovely why don't we have a go so that's what I'm going to do now I'm not going to draw in um, I'm not doing that on a lot of my videos now just to help you to get used to the idea that you don't always have to do that and you are good enough you do know enough and you are talented enough to do it without drawing first but if you want to that's okay too so it's not going to be exact I think I'm going to make them a little bit bigger because the, you know they're nice um, and the colors I'm going to use are limited palette I've got yellow ochre indigo and cad and scarlet I think but let's get started and I'll tell you where I'm going to start I am looking at the composition I'm looking at the gap between the two pieces of fruit and I'm looking where these stalks go okay always observe even if you're going to do a, just a little rough watercolor sketch always observe first and I think one of the best places to start would actually be to put in the stalk so I can then see where I am just let me adjust things a little bit here right so I'm going to get the stalk is smaller than the height of the whole gooseberry so let's just put that in whoops brush split there that's that one so if that's the bottom of that stalk I'm going across to where the other one is going up a bit and I think that'll be where that one goes it's only an approximation but you've got to start somewhere so let's have a bit more colour in that and a little bit more in here that's a good start now that one is quite a bit greener that the leaves the petals whatever they are than those and I'm going to do an outline because you've got these veins I mean they're beautiful things they really are so that that's going to make it easier for me because I'm going to draw effectively with my brush so I'm looking at that one there and it's quite raggedy And then we've got a central vein that goes up there. And then we've got this other one does that sort of thing. Then there's another one that comes out like that. And there's another one behind. And then we've got the gap where the fruit is, but with a strand there and we've got another sort of vein there and we'll have another one there and we'll go in and put one there now I'm going to find my orangey colour to get the orange for the fruit and I'm using, what am I using? Cadmium and Scarlet Lake and I'm going to go in and just make a rough shape here's my brush off now I'm going to do that one so again this is the um, yellow ochre and the indigo if you haven't got indigo, Prussian would be fine. Don't always panic if you haven't got the same colours as me. It's uh, just find what you've got. Right, okay, so we've got that stalk there, and then this comes lovely, lovely line there. In fact, you could use watercolour pencils if you wanted to, to make it a bit easy. This is a number six brush but it's got quite a nice point on it a 
and then we've got one that goes like that. They remind me of ballerina skirts. And this is behind that. And there's also another bit there. Then I'm going back to that orangey colour I mixed. In fact, I'm going to take some out of there because I've got far too much lurk in there. And we've got the full shape here. So I'm going to go in and make it there. No particular highlights on it because they're being sheltered, sheltered, shaded by the petals around them. But I see that it's just a slight highlight and that is probably reflected light from the paper. But we'll lift it out. Um, with a damp brush. Just let that bleed in. Okay, now this shape here, let's just go back to this and just make it a bit more firm. And you can see some of the orange through these petals, these leaves, they're quite interesting. And we can see the shape there. Okay, right, now I'm going to go in with a very weak solution of the yellow ochre, just to cover the whole area. Just leaving a little gap next to the fruit bit there. A bit behind there and there's a bit behind there. Now with these bits, the frondy bits, let's take a tiny tiny brush and I'm going to pull out some of the colour that's already there. And I'm going to move some of this about. In fact, let's go back to the because I'm looking where there is some strong colours and some paler colours. Because I am going to go in, and you're going to like the next bit. Those of you out there who like fiddling about with a tiny brush, I am going to go in and do some of the work on the veins, as it were. Right, I've gone over my line there, so. Let's just lift that a little bit and we'll, if you can't lift it out, something like this, just make it a bit bigger, make it a bit fondy. And likewise up here, I'm just putting a little bit, I'm just using this, the indigo, just to make these a bit greener because they are in fact a bit green so let's let's do what it looks like. I suppose as the, the fruit ripens and these petal leaves dry off they become browner. Just going to let some of the colour bleed in.
it's a lot darker over here because it hasn't got the light on it. And let's put a bit of that darker there. Just to get a bit of variation. So you can just dry your brush off and just lift it out if you've got too much. And let's just soften that off a little bit. That's a bit too harsh a line, just soften that off a little bit. Okay, let's let that dry off for a few minutes and I'll come back to it and do a little bit more. So that's dried off and these little cape gooseberries are starting to look rather nice. I rather like this. Um, I love what's happening here. I love the watermarks that I've got and I think that's going to be absolutely smashing. This one, oh, I've got to get a highlight. I've just noticed it. So don't worry, you can always have a go at lifting. And of course I've got to put some shadow on these um, cape gooseberry things, but I like the way that's happening. This, this line here is bothering me, but I think when I've gone in with my, my veins, so to speak, um, it's going to be okay. So I've mixed myself um, some deeper, uh, the indigo and the yellow ochre and I'm going to, in fact I'm going to take my glasses off for this. Now I hope my head's not in the way. No, it shouldn't be. Right, okay, let's get, we've got a lovely line, one of these sort of veins. It's a skeleton, isn't it? Coming up here and I think it's that one that goes through there but I've got it slightly in the wrong place, but it doesn't matter. This is number two brush. I was thinking of using a watercolour pencil for this, which you could, of course, but sometimes you want that natural look. Um, I think when you're using a brush you get a more natural look and if you've got a slight tremor <laughs> you've had too much coffee or too much the night before then that can enhance your work. Now we've got something happening there. I'm going to follow the watermark and let, let it uh, be my guide. I'm not going to put them all in because that would be, um, well, that would be too silly for words. It's not a botanical drawing, as we say. And I'm going to use some of the marks that my watermarks have given me as the guide. Notice here I'm only resting my little finger because I don't want to smudge my work but also it does give me that little slight wobble. You know what I say if you're holding it close you've got more control but I just want to have a little bit less control as I do this. So I'm working with what the watermarks have given me. Not doing too much because I think that would look too controlled and it's not going to be every little mark. 
Okay, that's that. Let's go over here for a bit. Right, we've got this. Try and show this shape a little bit more. We've got, let's have one go in there. And then I'm going to go, I know what I've done that I don't like. I got carried away with too much of that dark, darker green. I think I possibly want the lighter one. Just soften that off a little bit. And this one here is not quite so greeny looking. It's more of the yellow ochre. And just let's have some little Rondy bits there. And we'll do likewise up here. Now I'm going to go and just put a little bit of the yellow ochre and the Prussian just slightly under there. the shadow giving it a bit more shape. Right, now I just need a little bit more density on here I think just to get the shapes a little bit more. Without losing the, the transparency of it and here I'm going to put the slightest hint of the fruit underneath because you can see through it just a little bit just to give the hint of it and just making a bit of shape
It's very just very thin. I don't actually like having so many veins. Although I wanted to show some of them. Let's not have quite so many, let's lift some out. Don't be afraid to play around with things, you know. You can fiddle about, and you can change things. And you, you, you're you using these as a, um, a, a guideline, if you like. Let's get a bit of shadow on the, that petal coming up behind, just to show that it's a, like a double, it's folding back on itself. Okay. And I'm just going to make that, this line, which is the vein that's coming out. Let's make it a bit stronger. And it should also have a shadow under there. should be shadow there show where that's dipping in There's, there's a hell of a lot going on round there, which I haven't really got, but um, I'm not going to worry about it. Life's too short. And today it's far too hot. We're having ridiculous heat wave at the moment. So what better to do than come in and put the fan on and do some painting? <laughs> hey, I rather like this. I'm enjoying this. And that, my creative chums, is what it's all about. And if you don't know what to paint, and sometimes, you know, sometimes painting really helps you because it stops your mind going to places you probably don't want it to go. So if you can't think of something to paint, just paint anything and you will feel better, I am sure. I know I do after that. Now, shadows. We've got to have some shadows here because they're floating. So I think what I'm going to use is, let me just have a look. Let's see, what do we think? A bit more indigo in it. Oh, it's going to be good old raw umber, I think. Just to take the edge off it. Yeah, that'll do. Sorry, I succumbed to Payne's Grey, but just a bit. And here we've got a nice smooth bit there. That. Now, we're, I've got conflicting light sources, so because um, I've got two lights lighting the camera. So I'm going to have to just decide on one. So we'll, we'll, go, for, we'll go for that one. Having put that on, I am now in the process of lifting most of it off because I don't really think that was the right colour. You see, I change my mind as well from time to time. Okay. 
Shane's Grey. Right, that isn't casting a shadow, you can't see that. Let's just get some little frondy bits. And a slightly darker under there. And there we go. Don't overwork things. That is a happy, charming little watercolour sketch. So I hope you enjoyed watching that and there'll be more soon. So get your paint box out and whatever happens, enjoy your painting. <laughs>